My name is Ken Spady. I'm from Littleton, Colorado. I'm a victim of criminal court corruption, malicious prosecution, family court corruption, and law enforcement abuse. I bring my story forward because all of us in this country are just one charge or one accusation away from being stuck in this lawless America and this broken justice system that many brave men and women have gave their life to defend our freedom. Yet it's being abused every day and stepped on. We have no more rights left in this country. So folks, I invite you to pay attention, not only to my story, but many stories. I was married for 22 years with a girl that I knew since eighth grade, best of friends. We had a great marriage. Unfortunately, she became hooked on painkillers. We had a friend of ours living in our home for about two and a half years, helped him out over a period of 20 years on and off. He had a doctor that prescribed him 250 Percocet and 100 muscle relaxers a, a, a month. My wife started getting into those pain pills and completely changed her personality. But while this was happening, this man living in our house among my children mentioned to us that he was molested as a child. That brought to my attention some fear. My job as a parent is to protect my children. When I confronted him with this, asked him to leave our home as I started packing up our, his property, under his bed was a uh, magazine, one entitled Barely 18, the other one finally legal. I've never touched this person. I'm now the violent person. I tried to go by the law. The next morning, I took, a, took his pain pill bottles, the pornography that I found in my, under, his, under his bed, to the court, took that in front of a judge. The judge granted me a restraining order against this man. As I was leaving the courtroom, the court clerk chased me down, asked me to come back into the court. As I entered the court there, this man and my wife, now addicted to his painkillers, were there accusing me of some nasty things. The judge heard their story and told us that this was a domestic issue that we need to resolve between us. The judge retracted my restraining order. Two days later, this man and my ex-wife went down there told their story again to the same judge, and the judge gave them a restraining order against me. I was removed from my home. I have two wonderful children. My children are both honor students. Being self-employed, I was able to coach my children, our son in football, baseball, and wrestling, my daughter in volleyball and softball. I was always there for my children. I don't drink. I'm home every night. I helped in my children's classrooms. I escorted the field trips yet I was treated like a common criminal. This is scary because my rights were violated. When I was able to go get my 15 minutes to get my property out of my home, I met the police officer at a gas station a few blocks from my home. As I met him there, another police officer pulled in behind me and said I was under arrest. When I asked him why, he said I was stalking this man that was living in my home. He said I was stalking him that day. I handed him my phone, told him to call for my employees, verify my location. He immediately told me, tell it to the judge, and arrested me. That was a Friday night I was arrested. I bailed myself out. The following Monday morning, I went to court again, got another civil assist. This time I told the officer, I'm not meeting you anywhere near there. I met them about 10 miles from my home. I had several friends with me and a pastor in my church. As we got to the got to my home being escorted by a deputy, not just a deputy, he's a sergeant in charge of the civil assist department. I asked him what's the process, he said go get your stuff. I opened up my garage door, as I opened up my garage door he leaned on the front of my house and did not move from there. As I opened the garage door I discovered all of my clothes and most of my belongings were scattered along the floor. I picked them up along with the help from, with my, help from my friends. I went to the officer asked him, I need to go in the house and get some files out of my office for my business. Fortunately, I was escorted by the pastor of my church. We were in the home about two and a half, three minutes. Went to, the, went to my files, brought them out, came back out, closed the garage door, and we left. That was a Monday morning. Friday morning, I was a contractor at the time. I was working on a vacant home. I was waiting for my employees to arrive. I usually met them out front. I came out the door, walked around the corner, 
to look down the barrel of three assault rifles. There was a SWAT team there to arrest me. When I asked them what for, they said intimidating a witness. This man living in my home said I smeared a Twinkie on his bed and they brought a SWAT team to arrest me. I have nothing on my criminal record. I have a speeding ticket. A little bit about me. So I'm an honest, caring person. I do volunteer work through the community, outreach programs to the church. I've coached youth sports for over 10 years in five different sports. I'm NRA certified to teach the Boy Scout shooting program for their merit badges. I'm not a violent person, yet I was treated like a common criminal. As I was taken to jail by the SWAT cap and he, he asked me my story and he was absolutely furious and demanded that he had the report on his desk when he arrived taking me to jail. I was arrested in Arapaho, but the warrant was out of Douglas. I was locked up for 10 days until Douglas County finally sent a sheriff to bring me over to Douglas County from Arapaho. 10 days of my life, locked in a cage. Posted bail in Douglas County. As I was in Douglas County, I was treated just absolutely like a common criminal. I was charged with one, one account of stalking. But yet in Douglas County, I found out a lot of horrible truths. I found out that the prosecutors in this county are paid bonuses for convictions by the district attorney, Carol Chambers. That's absolutely a violation of our civil rights. How can you bring truth or justice if all they're working for is a bonus? I was charged with one account of stalking, yet by time D Douglas County prosecutors, they racked up six felonies and three misdemeanors trying to intimidate me. They told me, you're looking at 16 years in jail, but if you plead guilty to this one thing here, we'll drop all of the rest of this because they're such nice guys. I would not be willing to take anything that I'm not guilty of, so I fought them. I've been fighting them for two and a half years. I battled them, and I brought forward proof that I had nothing to do with this. I brought forward a recording of my ex-wife saying that she lied on the police report. It was the only way that she can get me out of the house. I brought forward police reports of the man living in my house claiming that he's dating my ex-wife my wife at the time, but yet I was the bad guy. About a year and a half into this battle, I beat all the charges except for one. My ex-wife was furious. I was at my daughter's volleyball game at a big crossroads volleyball tour tournament at the Denver Convention Center. 98 full-size volleyball courts and about 40,000 people. It's literally 40, it's literally shoulder to shoulder in the convention center. Yet my ex-wife and her mother decided to call the police, said I pushed her down, was kicking her, calling her a whore and pulling her hair with absolutely no proof. As they reported this to Denver police, I received not one call from Denver to ask my side of the story. This was just a week after Douglas County dropped the charges after I cornered them and said they had 10 days to provide verifiable proof that I did any of these crimes. The district attorney of Douglas County called me up and said, we need you to come in court. We're gonna modify your case. I went into court and to my surprise, I was totally blindsided. They said, your honor, we need to place Mr. Spady under arrest. He has a warrant out in Denver for disturbing the peace. They said also, your honor, we forgot to add a restraining order last year. So we're gonna arrest him here in Douglas County as well. The restraining order is date stamped March 21st, but they said I violated it March 14th. After court, they put me in jail. My friends posted bail for me within 24 hours. Yet I was locked up in Douglas County for 18 days. That's not a misstatement, 18 days. While I was in that jail, I had no soap, no shampoo, no hygiene supplies. I have a stack of kites, grievance letters to the guards. I need soap, I need shampoo. I have letters from the lieutenant, Mr. Spady, we don't have soap at this time, we're changing vendors. We'll have it in a couple weeks. I was in a filthy place, illegally, doing nothing wrong for 18 days. 
After being released, five days later, I started vomiting and, excuse the language, but crapping blood for five days. I thought I had cancer. When I was finally able to make it to the hospital, they immediately put me on IVs, ran tubes down my nose, and pumped my stomach out, all the blood that was in my stomach. After running a CAT scan, they informed me that I had an intestinal virus and I was about 10 hours from dying. Along this way, my children were taken from me. I was a father that was always there. I've always coached them. Last year, my daughter went to the Junior Olympics in Atlanta. Yet because of this restraining order that was put on by the county, not by my wife, by the county, because I beat all their other charges, I was denied to see a lifetime achievement and watch my little girl that I've coached since she was five years old play in the Junior Olympics. My daughter was a freshman in high school last year. As a freshman, she was the only starter on varsity. Not only if she was a starter, she lettered as a freshman. And yet again, her daddy was denied to be there by her side. Not only were my rights violated there, but I continue to fight and fight. When I went to court for the violation of a bail bonds that I was charged with because it was triggered from the disturbing the peace charge in Denver, I went to Denver court. The judge threw that case out because it absolutely had no merit. Yet the prosecution in Douglas County, because they get paid these bonuses for convictions, continued to charge me with violation of a bail bonds. How can I violate a bail bonds if I was not convicted of a crime that I was supposed to have committed? How can I be charged with a restraining order that was never in effect? Yet the prosecution continued to take me to trial for this because I would not take their plea bargains. The day of trial, Judge Vincent White asked me, Mr. Spady, has the prosecution ever offered you plea bargains in this case? And I said, yes, they have. But I said, Your Honor, when I get up here and take an oath, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, so help me God. If I take their pleas, I'd be lying to you under God. Is that the truth? Judge Vincent White refused to answer that question. I fought these battles by myself without an attorney. And this is the biggest mistake I made. I took a public defender for my trial. My public defender is just another part of the broken system. For my witnesses, I had the pastor of my church, the manager of the security company at the convention center, the prosecution, her mother, and my ex-wife. They told two different stories of what happened. They asked my ex-mother-in-law, were you scared? Oh, we were terrified. Asked her if she had a phone with her. She said yes. Asked her if her daughter had a phone with her. She said yes. They asked her, when did you call the police? They said, oh, we waited about an hour and a half, two hours later, called them from my house. That was her testimony. They bring in my ex-wife, asked her the same question. Oh, we called them immediately from the convention center. I thought this was a no-brainer. This is an absolute more lies brought forward by my ex-wife. Before all this happened, I recorded my ex-wife. Asked her, I said, Christy, anyone that knows me knows I would never ever threaten to kill you and especially my children. On the tape in her own voice, she said, I lied on the police report. That's how I got you kicked out of the house. I gave this report, gave this recording to the, to the district attorney and was accused of fabricating that tape. How could I fabricate my ex-wife saying that? But worse yet, what kind of mother would tell her children that her father threatened to kill them? As I fought through this battle, I refused to take plea bargains. Yet Judge White found me guilty based on two different stories and two different stories of when they called the police. I stood up after he ruled me guilty, asked him what his definition of reasonable doubt is. He told me to sit down or so I'll throw me in jail now. Since that time, I hired a top attorney here in Colorado, Harvey Steinberg, for over $20,000. Had six continuances. I sat across the table, asked this attorney, you're gonna be my, my attorney, is that correct? He said, yes, I'll be there for you. I said, I'm hiring you because you're the best. I don't want one of your associates. 
yet Mr. Steinberg only showed up one time. Not only did he send his associates, he sent a different associate each time. Each time they got there, well, give me five minutes, I want to look at your case. How did I get a fair trial? I asked the judge, according to the 14th Amendment of this Constitution of the United States, that many brave men and women died for, gave their life for our freedom, says we have the right to a fair trial. The Sixth Amendment of that same Constitution says we have the right to bring forward any and all witnesses in our favor. Yet my, my uh, public defender, as I was in court, my pastor of my church, the manager of the security company were texting me and calling me. When are we going to testify? When are we going to testify? I handed my phone to my public defender. She went out in the hall and called them, told them that they don't need to testify. How did I get a fair trial? None of my witnesses were called forward. Everything that I tell you in this, in this film clip is 100% verifiable, either through Douglas County Police reports, 911 calls, eyewitnesses. The prosecution, all they have is strictly hearsay, no verifiable facts at all. They don't like when you stand up and fight against them. They think they're God in their courtroom, and all they are is corrupt. Not only is my, my judge, Judge Vincent White, a judge, he's an active military personnel. In the military, you take an oath to defend the Constitution, not only against foreign enemies, but domestic. But here's the scary part. The domestic enemies in this country now, they're the judges. They're the prosecutors. They're the attorneys in this country. I'm, I'm warning you, everybody. You are one charge, one accusation away from being stuck in this same corrupt system. This comes from a man that has no criminal record. I'm begging you, share this with your friends. It's time that we speak up.